Welcome to News at 10. I'm Brendan Lepaul. Heavy downpour failed to dampen Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin's spirit in his final round to woo voters to support Kabungan Rakyat Sabah GRS in the state election. At Kampung Sungai Tamit in Tamparuli Tuarang, villagers took shelter under canopies as they listened attentively to the Prime Minister's speech. Tan Sri Muhyiddin said his task as the Prime Minister must continue expressing his wish to see Sabah becoming a region in the Federation. Saya mau melihat Sabah bangkit bangun sebagai sebuah wilayah lebih pada lebih yang hebat. Rakyatnya hebat. Rakyatnya mampu bina dirinya sendiri. Pembangunannya pesat, jalan-jalannya bagus. Connectivity internet dan wifi ada di mana-mana saja. Also present at Kampung Sungai Damid was Sabah's Parti Pribumi Bersatu Malaysia Chairman Datuk Sri Haji G. Noor, who is contesting for the Sulaman seat and Parti Bersatu Sabah PBS Secretary General Datuk Jahid Jahim, who is running for Tamparuli. Tan Sri Muhyiddin said he has no doubt GRS would achieve victory if the people translated their support into votes in tomorrow's polling process. He also noted that Sabahans were matured in politics as the state had seen political changes over the years from time of the Sabah United National Organization to Parti Warisan Sabah. He then said the time has come for the state to be governed by GRS, which has responsible representatives to serve the people better. The highly infectious D614G COVID-19 strain has been found in the Benteng LD Lahad Datu cluster, according to lab studies by the Health Ministry. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hesham said the virus found in this cluster was similar to that detected in Kedah with the same mutation. He said the Institute for Medical Research, IMR, has conducted genome sequencing tests on 32 COVID-19 viruses isolated and cultured from the Benteng LD cluster, Siva Ganga cluster, Tawa cluster, Sungai cluster and the Bukit Tiram cluster. As suspected, Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hicham said the D614G mutation is found in all 32 of the viruses. He said although all 23 viruses from the Benteng LD are from the D614G mutation are similar to the ones found in Kedah, they are not related. However, he said the ministry is continuing to conduct tests and compare these virus samples with others in the COVID-19 family of phylogenetic tree. The D614G virus is said to be 10 times more infectious than other types, especially when transmitted by so-called super spreaders. The D614G mutation was discovered by scientists in July 2020 and its emergence is seen as a setback to ongoing efforts to formulate an effective COVID-19 vaccine. Meanwhile, the Health Director General also confirmed 111 COVID-19 infections in the country today, making this the second time in a week that the number of new cases is in triple figures. According to Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hesham, Sabah recorded the highest number of new cases with 97 new infections. The Banga Banga cluster in Sampurna had a spike of 74 new infections, bringing its total to 134 cases. The Benteng Lahat Datu cluster, the country's biggest active cluster, had an additional 13 new cases. In total, the cluster has produced 743 cases. In Kedah, the Sungai cluster saw another seven new cases. Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hesham said of the country's 111 new cases, 107 are local transmissions, while four are import cases. Malaysia's cumulative total of cases since the outbreak began is now 10,687. The country also discharged 30 COVID-19 patients, which means the total number of people who have recovered so far is 9,696 or 90.7%. There were no new fatalities with the death toll remaining at 133. The number of active cases in the country now is 858. Four people are under intensive care, with three of them requiring ventilating support. 
the Administrative Enhanced Movement Control Order EMCO that was imposed in Kota Sata District, Kandah, on the 11th of September will end today. Senior Minister Security Datuk Sri Isma Sabri Yaakob said the government, however, had decided to extend the targeted EMCO at Rumah Pangsa Tongkang Yad in Seberang Pera until the 7th of October because the district is facing a high risk of COVID-19 infection. A total of 94 residents in that location have been screened and nine of them from five houses were found positive of COVID-19. Dr. Sri Isma Sabri in a statement today said the extension is to enable the second round of screening to be done by the Health Ministry. The Royal Malaysia Police, PDRM and the Malaysian Armed Forces, ATM, will maintain movement controls in the location to ensure all residents abide by the standard operating procedure and quarantine order. He also announced that Sekola Kebangsaan Sungai Korok Lama will be closed from tomorrow until the 9th of October. A businessman and his bodyguard were shot in the chest and several parts of the body by two assailants on a motorcycle in Jalan Sultan Abdul Samad in Banting at noon today. Kuala Langat Police Chief Superintendent Azizan Tukiman said three secondary school students were also injured in the incident at about 12.45pm when they were knocked down by the victim's BMW which went out of control. He said earlier the two male suspects tailed the victim's vehicle before firing about nine shots at the car. Initial investigation found the shooting occurred about 100 meters from a secondary school. The bodyguard who was driving the BMW lost control after being shot, causing the car to ram into several other vehicles. Superintendent Azizan said the BMW also knocked down three secondary school students who were waiting by the roadside to return home after school. The car later came to a stop nearby school fencing. He said the businessman and his bodyguard also taken to Banting Hospital for treatment and were later transferred to Tengku Ampuan Rahima Hospital in Klang while the three injured students were treated at Banting Hospital. Initial investigation found the motive of the incident was believed to be over a squabble between two groups and did not rule out it could due to business rivalry. Two brothers were charged in the magistrate's court in Alogaja today with the murder of their friend during a fight involving a group of men in Taman Pengkalan Inda two weeks ago. T. Turai Raj, 28, a truck driver, and T. Gunaraj, 27, unemployed, nodded their heads to indicate that they understood the charge against them, which was read before magistrate Noshasmita, or rather Norhasmanita Abdul Manap. However, no plea was recorded as murder cases are under the purview of the High Court. According to the charge sheet, the two brothers are accused of killing R. Anbarasu, 25, also a lorry driver, at Jalan Tujoblas, Taman Pengkalang, Indah, between 9.15pm and 9.30pm on the 13th of September. They are charged under Section 302 of the Penal Code, which carries a mandatory death sentence if convicted. The court set the 30th of October for the re-mention of the case, which was handled by Deputy Public Prosecutor Artana Sarma Rao. While the other two accused were represented by lawyer Haijan Oma. Meanwhile, also charged in the same incident was the storekeeper M. Ananababu, 30, who was accused of causing injury to T. Pragash, 33, the brother of the two siblings, by using a machete. The accused pleaded not guilty to the charge under Section 324 of the Penal Code, which provides for a maximum jail term of 10 years or a fine or whipping, or any two of those punishments if convicted. Ananababu also pleaded not guilty to a charge of causing damage through act of mischief by smashing the windscreen and side mirrors of a proton vira car belonged to Pragash, resulting in losses amounting to 1,000 ringgit. He was charged with committing both offences at the same location and day as the Anbarasu murder. The court disallowed bail and set the 3rd of October for re-mention of the case. A Nasi Lemak seller pleaded not guilty in the sessions court in Alo Gaja today to charges of neglecting and injuring a six-year-old girl under her care. July Lee Mat Syed, 40, and another person still at large as the persons entrusted to look after the girl were jointly charged with neglecting or exposing the child in a manner likely to cause a physical injury. 
The charge under Section 31, Subsection 1, Subsection A of the Child Act 2001 carries a fine not exceeding 50,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding 20 years, or both, if convicted. The mother of five and another person still at large were also charged with injuring the child using a stick, causing the girl to suffer a broken left arm under Section 326 of the Penal Code, which carries a maximum jail term of 20 years and a fine or whipping upon conviction. The offences were allegedly committed at a house in Taman Sri Paya Rumput Masjid Tanah between 8am and 12pm from May until this month. Judge Ahmad Sazali Omar set bail at 10,000 ringgit with one surety and fixed the 26th of October for mention. Deputy Public Prosecutor Artana Sarma Rao appeared for the prosecution while the accused was unrepresented. Coming up, companies abusing wage subsidy to be blacklisted. But first, the 10 billion ringgit Prihatin supplementary initiative package, Kita Prihatin, is expected to have a positive impact on the nation's economic growth in the fourth quarter of 2020. Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Tengku Abdul Aziz said the economic stimulus packages announced by the government, Prihatin, Prihatin SME Plus, Panjana and Kita Prihatin worth a total of 305 billion ringgit are expected to contribute 3.7 to 4 percent to the nation's growth domestic product this year. The move, he said, will also place the country in a better position for economic recovery by 2021. He said the 10 billion ringgit allocation is expected to result in a positive growth, which will be channeled directly to the people as well as businesses. In a statement today, Tanku Datu Sri Zafru said the government is also expecting a multiplying effect from the measures implemented under Kita Prihatin and the economic stimulus packages, which are currently in place. On Wednesday, Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin announced the Kita Prihatin package comprising the 7 billion ringgit Bantuan Prihatin Nasional 2.0, PPN 2.0, 2.4 billion ringgit targeted wage subsidy program and 600 million ringgit Prihatin special grant GKP. Tengku Datu Sri Zafrul said the BPN 2.0 will not only ease cash flow challenges but also allow individuals and families to purchase their daily necessities including promotional items under the Panjana initiative through the Buy Malaysian Products campaign. Now, stern action, including blacklisting, will be taken against companies and employers who abuse the wage subsidy program. Human Resources Minister Dr. Sri M. Saravanan said this is following the complaints received against employers who failed to pay the wage subsidy to their employees. He said apart from blacklisting, employers found to be using fake documents to apply for the program would also be brought to court. Saya cuma mengingatkan kepada syarikat-syarikat jangan cuba mengambil kesempatan. Ini waktu dan masa untuk kita betul-betul betul dan bantu rakyat dan kerajaan sedang buat seberapa banyak yang boleh. Okay? Jangan jangan saya minta ada syarikat-syarikat jangan tolong jangan ambil kesempatan ini bukan waktu dan masa ini. Yet to date, the ministry received complaints involving 89 employers who have yet to make payments to 846 employees. 1,663 companies were also detected using fake documents for their 14,800 employees involving a claim of 31 million ringgit. Tato Sri Saravanan said this to reporters after officiating the Human Resources Development Fund, HRDF, under the National Economic Recovery Plan Panjana in Johor Bahru today. The wage subsidy program was introduced on the 1st of April to help lessen the burden of employers and employees affected by the implementation of the movement control order, which was enforced to curb the spread of COVID-19. The program is open to companies registered with the social security organization, SOXO. Serba Dynamic Holdings Berhad aims to reduce the company's dependency on oil and gas ONG revenue by an estimate 40 to 45 percent by 2022. Serba Dynamic Chief Executive Officer Datuk Muhammad Abdul Karim Abdullah said the Energy Services Group targets to reduce its ONG revenue to 75 percent from 85 percent last year. 
He said the company's diversification will primarily focus on the technology-related segment. Based on the order book that Sabadami has at the moment, we are still uh, believing that we can uh, move forward uh, 2020 uh, to have uh, IT-related uh, revenue uh, coming in at the value of approximately uh, uh, 350 million ringgit Malaysia. He said this after signing a Memorandum of Understanding MOU with Huawei Technologies Malaysia Sundaran Berha today. As for non-ONG, Dato Muhammad Abdul Karim said the company targets a revenue contribution of up to 55% in two years. Meanwhile, Dato Muhammad Abdul Karim said the collaboration with Huawei would boost Serba Dynamics' digital transformation in the ONG industry. The partnership also includes setting up smart industry areas in Strawa and Johor. Huawei Malaysia Chief Executive Officer Michael Wan said... Under the partnership, the tech company will be providing 5G technology, cloud services and artificial intelligence AI technology to realise Serba Dynamics digital transformation. segment, Fatah Hamas agreed to hold first Palestinian election since 2006. Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin is set to reaffirm Malaysia's long-standing position on the question of Palestine and plight of the Rohingya in Rakhine State when delivering Malaysia's national statement at the general debate of the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly, UNGA, tomorrow. Addressing the general debate in New York via a pre-recorded video, the Premier is also expected to underscore the importance of collective action by member states as well as the United Nations in addressing global challenges. Wisma Putra in a statement today said Tan Sri Muhyiddin is also expected to raise the issue of reforming the UN. This year's general debate theme, the future we want, the United Nations we need, reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism, confronting COVID-19 through effective multilateral action focuses on the need to strengthen international cooperation amid the disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Wisma Putra added that the high-level week of the 75th session of the UNGA featured three mandated high-level meetings in which Malaysia would be represented at the ministerial level. That concludes this evening's news at 10 and our top story, highly infectious COVID-19 strain found in five clusters. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Till then, I'm Brendan DePaul. Stay tuned to Salaran Berita RTM and have a pleasant evening.